Welcome back right here in Park City. We are a film festival town. It's always great to hear about other festivals happening across the country and we love film. Here to tell us all about the Aspen Shorts Fest is Susan Rubel. This festival is coming up. It starts on April 6th. It's virtual so you can watch it wherever you are. It's one of the premier shorts film festivals across the country. They get film submissions from all over the world. Susan, I'm excited to talk about this. How are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Doing well. Tell me about the history of the Aspen Shorts Fest. So Aspen Shorts Fest uh, is in its 30th year. We're celebrating three decades of great short film. We are an Oscar qualifying film festival in technically five categories in animation, comedy, documentary, drama, and short short, which are films under 10 minutes. Um, and for Oscar contention, that really translates to animated Oscar uh, qualification doc Oscar qualification and dramatic Oscar qualification. So a comedy could fall under that. Um, so that's a pretty big accolade for us. And I think it's one of the reasons why we are sought out by so many amazing filmmakers around the world. Um, for the second consecutive year, we've had about 3000 submissions. Um, we have a programming team who have called those submissions down to 80 films and 11 programs, uh, 33 countries represented. And I'm very proud to say that we have 55 female or female co-directed films this year. Incredible amount of films. Really excited to dig in and hear more about this year's specific festival. And as you mentioned, it is virtual. So before we talk about specific films that will be premiering, what is the virtual format and how can anyone anywhere tune in? Well, first and foremost, you can log into aspenfilm.org for full details on the festival and all of our industry activities and conversations. Um, we are using a platform called Eventive, which I think if a lot of people have been watching films online throughout the past year, you'll be familiar with the Eventive platform. It's what a lot of distributors and other festivals are using. So once you have an Eventive account, you can just log in and access whatever you're looking for. Um, we sell individual tickets, which are $15 a piece. We also sell a five film festival pass. We also sell all access passes. Um, with any of the tickets or passes, you have access to live stream Q and A's for each program. And if you miss the live stream, we will be recording everything and they will be put up with the film program that you would be seeing. Um, we have a really great interactive program this year uh, where we're using another platform called Filmocracy. So for people who are familiar with festivals or certain conferences, Filmocracy basically offers um, interiors and conference-like settings where people can go and interact. So it would be almost a, an intimate Zoom for six or eight people sitting around a table on a virtual floor. So we've partnered with four iconic buildings in Aspen, um, the Wheeler Opera House, which is normally where we would be presenting our world-class festivals. They will be the virtual entry to the event of platform. We're working with the Aspen Art Museum and the virtual Aspen Art Museum roof will be the host to our nightly conversations with industry. Um, we're calling them our sip and chat sessions. So we have uh, four great industry um, knowledgeable experts, one of whom is a programmer uh, for Sundance. His name is Sudeep Sharma. Sudeep has also been a programmer for us. So he's going to come back to talk with our guests all about what festivals look for when programming, how programmation happens. Um, and we have a couple of other programmers and creatives on board as well. Um, we are working with the historic Hotel Jerome in downtown Aspen. They are serving as the hub for our filmmaker lounge and the Red Brick Center for the Arts, which is where Aspen Film is actually located. They're gonna be hosting all of our educational programs. So we've created this little interactive map with Filmocracy and guests can click on the different buildings and they'll be taken to a portal where they can interact. We are also doing uh, three amazing workshops, one with Red Camera, another one with Dolby Sound, and the last one with the one of the co-founders of the Eventive platform, just talking about what, what it looks like to watch films virtually these days and how the technology has gotten more and more sophisticated over the past year. Um, so, Full pass holders have access to all of these conversations and workshops. Um, and we really encourage people to check it out. Last year, we had to turn the festival virtual 
think we found out on March 12th that the Wheeler was shuttering um, and our festival was starting on March 31st. So we took the program online and we didn't really have time to do anything interactive. Whereas this year we wanted to get ahead of it all and really offer more opportunities and conversations for the general public to really learn more about the world of short form, um, hear more about the industry and just engage in conversations where they can mingle and chat with other people. That's an impressive slate of virtual events and activities that people can join in with. As you mentioned last year, you had just a couple of weeks to be able to completely shift gears and change everything. It sounds like it was successful. Anything that you learned yeah. from last year's festival that you're bringing into this year's? So what I think we learned is that, you know, we have a we have a nationwide audience. I think we had people logging in last year from 40 states, which was really encouraging. Whereas normally, you know, yes, Aspen Shorts Fest is a crown jewel for us in the crown of festivals. We do three a year. So this is definitely our biggest with the most heavy lifting. So it was really crushing, particular, particularly to the filmmaking teams that come in. Um, you know, obviously we're much smaller than something like Sundance, um, which has hundreds of films and, you know, a global reach. But we do usually have close to film, 50 filmmakers from around the world who are with us. And it's really almost like a, like a camp for them. And everybody kind of travels in a pack. And by the end of the week, it's really satisfying to see all these connections that filmmakers from around the globe have made and listening to them talk about hatching new collaborations. Um, so that was really the biggest disappointment for us. The fact that we were able to execute and put all these amazing films online and give people access to them, this is right as the pandemic started. So I think people were really grateful to have something to look forward to and to be able to experience these little windows into the world um, in what was otherwise a pretty bleak time. So that for us was a real silver lining that we were able to offer something of this caliber with so much variety. We always do a family program, um, which is suitable for little littles up to you know elementary school kids. So the family program was also a huge hit for people. I think for a lot of parents, it was a relief to have something new and unusual to share with kids and it was exciting. Um, we ended up doing a best of the festival, which we'll do this year as well. And we're going to host that as a separate event along with our awards presentation so if people weren't able to experience the full festival on April 17th, they will have the chance to watch our awards presentation and then watch all of the award winners. You've achieved this global festival and you mentioned 3,000 films were submitted and you chose 80. So very competitive. Of yeah. the films that were chosen, are there any that you want to highlight? You know, there are just so many great films. I almost don't even know where to start. Um, we have certain films that were made in the pandemic, which I think is a real feat in and of itself. Um, and I have to say, there's just so much talent on screen. Uh, one of the films that's getting a lot of attention because the director is Zach Woods and it also stars Will Ferrell um, is a film called David, which is a very satirical comedy. Um, the film that opens program one is called Wearable Tracy, which is just such a delightful documentary. Um, the Sundance short film winner this year, Lizard, um, which is from Africa, is a phenomenal and really engaging film. We, we have some really interesting African um, submissions this year, or I shouldn't even say submissions, entries this year that are on screen. Uh, we have a great film um, out of East Africa called Al Sit another female director, another great documentary, which um, was an HBO presentation or was done with HBO and MTV, um, which is called My Father the Mover, which I just love. We have some unbelievable animation, um, O Black Hole, just it's, it's an opera with claymation that absolutely blew my mind. Um, trying to think, there are just so many of them. Um, there is a great piece in the Aspen Times Weekly yesterday where Andrew Travers, who's our arts and culture editor, really highlights a lot of the films and breaks them down by category. Um, so I would suggest checking out Aspen Times Weekly for a big rundown. And all the films, as I said, are available at aspenfilm.org. There are full program listings, um, films alphabetical, and then by program. So I really encourage people to take a look check out a few different programs. There is a little bit of something different in every one. I think you will find Doc 
and animation in every program. Um, our programming team led by Jason Anderson, who programs Toronto Shortcuts, uh, they do a really great job of undulating the program. So there is, as I said, something for everyone in every program and not every program has straight drama or straight comedy. It's very much mixed up. So there is a rhythm to everything. Well, thank you so much, Susan Rubel, for joining us today from the Aspen Shorts Fest.